Yes, sir, Perry. There's a word you didn't use, and I'd just like to know whether it was intentional or unintentional. And the word that I'm thinking of is fascism. So uh, that's a good point. I think that we should get more comfortable using the F word in this country. <laughs> really, because after all, you know, fascism, properly understood, um, is something, you know, I think that in order to really understand it, we should ask ourselves, uh, what did Mussolini say fa about fascism? After all, he was a uh, proponent of fascism. He was proud of fascism. Mussolini said, fascism, properly understood, should be called corporatism because it merges the military might of the state with the economic might of our mighty corporations. And he was proud of it. So I didn't use the word, I mean, there's lots of words that I didn't use, uh, but I'm glad you brought it up, Perry, and I will not shy away from the fact that I think that actually what we're living in today is what I, I will, uh, I will paraphrase Bush the Elder and say, this feels like a kinder, gentler fascism. <laughs> this feels like a low-level kind of fascism. It really does, because... Except where it isn't. Except, yeah, well, that's right. It feels kinder and gentler, except when it doesn't. In other words, like, if you march peacefully with a, with a permit, you are allowed to do that. But if you actually ever put your body in the way that actually will disrupt the war machine, they will shoot rubber bullets at you, they will lock you up. And I think that we need to steal ourselves for the fact that the movement that we really want to be part of is going to require us to be willing to put our bodies in a way that we will disrupt the operation of this racist, sexist, class oppressive, and world destroying system. And I say that proudly. And I actually say that happily. Because let me tell you, you know, when I ran, like, look, I have sued corporate polluters, I have lobbied elected officials, I have run for office, I have been arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience. In fact, when I ran for president, I like to say I ran on my arrest record. <laughs> you know, I'm proud that I've been to jail for justice. Anybody else been to jail for justice in this room? Raise your hand. I see several people raising. How did it feel, honestly? Felt good, right? Yeah, okay. I was arrested uh, Thanksgiving Day uh, in New York City at a uh, Thanksgiving Day parade. At a thing? For CISPIS, actually. Uh, for CISPIS, all right, the Committee yeah. on Solidarity. Yeah. Now, you know, I just want to point out, whenever you go through the, I, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not romanticizing jail. Jail sucks, mm -hmm. right? But there's nothing romantic about that. I am saying this. For me, when I, every time I've gone through the process, of being willing to stand up against what I believed was an unjust operation of the state apparatus, and I put myself in that position. See, it's not, like, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is action in the presence of fear. It's to say, this is wrong, and it's wrong, and even though I'm afraid, I'm going to act in a way that is legitimate and just, and every time I've ever done it, I've come through the other end, and I feel a little different. And in Texas, I can say this. I adjust my belt a little different. You know what I'm saying? I, I stand a little different. I walk a little different. I act a little different. And I'm telling you, I think that the ruling elite, the, really, the real minority in this country, let me tell you something. The real minority in this country are not women. The real minority in this country are, 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 are not people of color. The real, true minority are the small, tiny, one half of one percent of uh, the bastards who own everything, and they've got us sort of chasing our tails. When they actually see us working together and then figuring out how to do it joyously and happily and being willing to actually disrupt this system, it makes them very afraid, and it makes me very happy. <laughs> Who's number three? Was that me? That's I, you, Art, and then I've got another one. I'll start another stack. i got a couple questions I'll say. On one of them is just kind of a little detail about history. You went through history a lot. But first, let me ask you, I think I remember reading in the last 24 hours an essay by, was it Ben Mansky that talked about the confluence of the uh, move to amend and occupy? Yes. I, I like that essay. I read, I read yes, mind. it's on Common Dreams. Y'all should check it out. Yeah. Okay. The question was historical. I added 75 to 1789, and I got right toward the end of the Civil War. What happened then that... Maybe well, there was two things. So no, you're exactly right. So what happened in the Civil War was something that I think we really need to understand. Civil War means that society is basically 
disintegrating, right? And so as a result, this era, just before and during the Civil War, is also known in, in our sanitized history textbooks as the age of the robber barons. Uh -huh. It's the age where literally people were buying and selling legislation. So all those state laws that were being used to curtail corporations, those laws were being stripped in state after state by the wealthy coming in and literally buying off legislators. And there was a fight back against it with the populist uprising and then the, the, the Knights of Labor. So all of American history is replete with examples of the ruling elite uh, trying to find ways to continue to stay in power and ordinary people to organize against it. That's why, and, and not only statutorily art, but also what you see is the example of the, the use of the court system even whenever the, the corporations and the wealthy were not able to get their way by passing laws, then they would go into court to overturn other laws that said, oh, but you're violating our rights. You see, the idea of corporate constitutional rights is not just about corporate money and elections. It's also about the fact that these corporate bastards are overturning environmental protection laws. They're overturning worker safety laws. They're overturning public health laws. And this is the point that I want to be very clear about, folks. Move to Amend is not only concerned about the First Amendment and corporate money in elections. We also believe that corporations do not have any constitutional rights at all. They don't have the 14th Amendment right to equal protection. They don't have the right to uh, no takings without just compensation. These are political matters, but they are not appropriate for unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs to overturn our democratically enacted laws. Does that make sense, Art? Yes, it does. Um, I'm also wondering, when did judges start being elected such that corporate money could affect election outcomes? Uh, that actually, so the question was about uh, uh, electing judges, and the short answer is that that uh, is done state by state. Some judges, some states still elect judges. Some have elections where you can only repeal them. Others, uh, judges are actually appointed. So uh, that's, that's actually been a, a fight back and forth. I saw several hands go up, so if anybody wants to make a comment, raise your hand. Let's go. Lee Matt, uh, is one. Matt, you're two. Ma'am, uh, I don't know your name, but you'll be... MC. Sorry? MC. MC, you'll be three. Susan. Susan, you'll be number four. Richard. Richard, you'll be five. Anybody that I missed? Lee. Lee. Lee the lesser. Lee, Lee the other will be six. I didn't. So, Leo, you are number one. Not just because you're a hostess. No, I, I, I think the fourth on uh, church literature, and yes. I think it's a good time. That's correct. And, and I don't know if all the states have that, or if it, I'm sure it's or just maybe Boston. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that that was, a, that was actually a municipal law. It wasn't just even a state law. So, so uh, it was a, a, what Lee is pointing out is that the corporation, during uh, the, the period immediately after the American Revolution, it was quite appropriate. Uh, to write any kind of law that could control the size of the corporation, what the corporation could do, corporations could be disbanded, uh, corporations could be divested. I mean, so you're absolutely right, Lee, and it's another example. Look, I want to say this very clearly. I think part of the problem is not that we don't have tools for how to deal with these destructive corporations. The problem is that we have not been exercising the, the collective political will. Because we can actually begin a process right now. The Texas Attorney General could revoke corporate charters right now. Uh, on the basis, like, uh, they could revoke certificates of authority to do business in Texas right now. Uh, so, and we could write laws like that, Lee. Okay, there's, there's one more thing. It's yes. I think a, a very big, again, partly from that, that course, but a big push to... Uh, both to colonize and to have slavery was religion. I mean, it was the arrogance of, of the Christians that came over here, but it was also, they used that if they were a corporate entity that wanted to take over and wanted to go to the cobble or whatever, and they used it as an excuse and to talk other people into it. 
Well, that's certainly true. I mean, religion is a tricky matter, uh, and I also want to say this, you know, and Christianity as well. I, I like what uh, Gandhi said about Christianity. He said, you know, upon reading the New Testament, I surely would have become a Christian, but sadly I met some. <laughs> and, and I say that I say that genuinely because my grandfather was a Baptist preacher and I can remember as a little boy reading the New Testament and thinking wow this is just so great it's love, it's forgiveness it's you know it's like these are all beautiful and wonderful things but my experience with Christianity was mostly that it was hypocritical they never walked the talk they didn't walk the talk you know so uh, but at the same time i have to say this lee i'm not gonna I, like i want to work with people of faith because i recognize that all of the great social movements that have happened in this country have either birthed out of or been nurtured within the faith traditions and so you know i think that you make a valid critique of how religion was used illegitimately I think that's definitely true, and at the same time, I think that we need to recognize that people of faith, uh, we can appeal to their righteousness uh, about the kind of peaceful, just, sustainable world uh, that, that we are entitled to uh, as a birthright, um, and so I, I want to say that as well, like, so, but I thank you for your comment. Number two, Matt. Uh, two things, I guess. Um, first one is, I guess... I'm seeing that you know, it's great to see that we are or seeing that you know, the, uh, the move to Occupy Wall Street and then Occupy together all around the country. I guess I'm thinking just hopefully down the road that you know, the, the, the state will continue its electric independent and it won't be co opted by the Democrats. They asked two, uh, two asshole parties, uh, Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> well, I mean, that's always the biggest concern. You know, they won't be co opted when the elections roll around next year and Obama's going to be out campaigning and we have to worry we're going to choose between the D or the R team. The Dean thing or Don team, you know, we're going to choose, have to choose, you know, just to worry about this. We don't want to see it. I just hope it doesn't become co opted by them. You know what I mean? Well, I um, agree with that. And I guess one of the things. Um, uh, recently, I don't know if you read any article, like, Common Dreams is a good source. Uh, they had uh, a lot of, I don't know who it was, the Alec, American Legislative Exchange Council. They had a whole series of articles, and you read them on that. Well, not only did I read them, but I'm happy to tell you that uh, the story of the American Legislative Exchange Council, Alec, yeah. was actually broken by an organization called the Center for Media and Democracy, yeah, yeah. who happens to be one of the founding mem uh, coalition members of Move to Amend. So, I mean, like, I'm telling y'all, like, I've never been part of any coalition effort, any movement that has this much broad and depth in, in its support. Uh, we're moving faster than anything I've ever personally been associated with. You know, I, it's almost kind of stunning. And yes, Alec is shameful, but the, the ability that we've actually been able to actually shine a light on, on Alec, uh, that has actually been very powerful. And I do want to circle back around, Matt, and tell you, I'm personally committed, and I know that the leadership, not only of Move to Men, but also the leadership of Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Together, are committed that this is a nonpartisan or multi-partisan effort. In other words, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in, if what party you're in, or if you're in a no party at all. That what, like to join Move to Amend, all you have to do is be committed to a constitutional amendment to abolish the illegitimate idea that a corporation is a person with constitutional rights, and to establish that money is not speech. And then you can join us regardless of what party you're in. And we're not giving anybody a pass. Like ultimately, I want every candidate for office to be asked the question. Do you believe that a corporation is a person with constitutional rights? And uh, if no, will you support a constitutional amendment uh, to make that clear? How about it, Don? We already know where I've done, uh, where I, what's written, Mitt Romney stands. Well, we do. So anyway, I guess I'll, I'll say this. The last thing I'll say is this, that what we've seen happen with so, when social movements do get co-opted by the electoral process, it mutes it. And I hope that we don't allow this to happen. And I think that I think a lot of people learned a lesson in the anti-war movement. I think a lot of people learned a lesson in the immigration rights fight. And I think a lot of people learned a lesson uh, in the healthcare uh, fight. And so let's learn that lesson.